I'd be home by nine Hell, I tell her that most of the time Whoa, whoa, and baby don't know on her too much Whoa, whoa I'll tell her where, but I won't say why Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Hey guys, welcome back to Otter Creek and Rio Grande. We've got another build series. And I thought I'd start by showing this. I uh, This started as just a, a regular one of my cardboard mock-ups. And I didn't have all the material I needed to do the cardboard mock-up. I started with scraps and then didn't have enough stuff to do the roof, so I I went to Hobby Lobby and got a bunch more cardboard. And while I was there, I thought, you know, I'm going to get some of this balsa and just see what I can do. And all I did was glue on some balsa wood and all of the techniques for the cardboard mock-up I applied to this structure and nothing fancy at all. And uh, it turned out pretty good. Good enough that I think it will make the layout as a, as a regular structure. And right now, uh, I do not have what I need to continue working on the turntable. So uh, I thought, since I've really got nothing else to do, I'm going to mock up another building. Only it's not going to be a mock-up, it's going to be a, a full-fledged, I think this will go on the layout building. And I've talked about this before, and I thought this would be a good project to get started with. This is the structure that I'm working on, and it looks roughly square to me. It's really kind of hard to tell. But I had this laying around already. I've had this block of wood for a couple of years. And it's 20 by 20. So that's what I'm going to use. And I think it's going to work just fine for my purposes. And you really can't see much about this. But I believe there's a door on this end. And on the computer, I zoomed way in. And you can kind of see a small window there. I've got no pictures of the south side of it. And the only picture I've got uh, that shows, oops, that shows what would be, I believe, the west side, it's completely in shadow like it is here. So you really can't make out any, any details at all. Uh, and by the way, this building here is uh, this building. So I'm going to put a door, a window on this end. I'll probably put the same window on the other end. And I think I will also put a door on the other side. I, I'm not sure because, you know, that side's never going to be seen. So I don't know if I'll even mess with it because it's, it's just kind of a waste of material, but uh, I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So this is a sheet of board and batten, and that's what I'm going to use. And I've already got a couple of pieces made for the sides, and right now they're rough. I don't have them uh, cut to the exact length I want yet. And, you know, it starts with the two before. So, you know, the, the thing about that is you just want to do everything you can to get your two before square before you ever begin. And I'm pretty close. It's, I probably could have done a little better job, but this was before I had a machinist square. Now that I've got a machinist square, uh, I, I check my blade on the table saw every time before I begin. But this is going to work. So 
So what I do, and you know, I've mentioned this before, this is, this is not my technique. I cannot take credit for this at all. I think this is an old ancient technique that uh, model railroaders used back when there were no kits. And a gentleman by the name of Bill Shaw is the one that I learned it from off of Rob Bennett's uh, channel over there on the, uh, I, th I think his channel's name is the Stephen Bennett Railroad, but uh, his, his name's Rob, uh, Stephen is his son. So what I do is I like to get my, my blocks on the wood and always double check and make sure that, that whatever is scribed on your, on your sheeting material is going the direction you want it to. And you can see, oops. So all I'm gonna do is make sure that that's nice and square on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a one on there and a one here, just in case there's a little bit of difference. Uh, and now it's just a matter of, of carefully cutting it out with a sharp knife, which, you know, I'm not gonna film that, so uh, stand by. I will make one quick note about, you know, your material. I always use a good 90 degree angle when I make my cuts. And that way you're preserving what you've got left over. And even when I make this cut, I will use my 90 degree here and make sure that it's 90 degree. And then if my substructure is not, then I will sand back to it. So I'm always going to be just a little bit proud of the pencil mark. So what I'm doing now is just sanding off a little bit of each side of my long walls and trying to make sure that again, they're nice and square. <clears throat> and you know, I go ahead and mark all sides so that you know which side goes where, which is the bottom and which is the top. And, you know, the building's not perfectly square, but it's square enough that you'll never detect uh, with the naked eye that it's not. But when you go to put these together, uh, neatness counts. And what you don't want is any overhang on either side because when you go to glue your sides on, what you want is you want these to butt up against each other like that. No overlap at all because once you get them glued on, you're gonna come into the corner with this and create your trim. Uh, if I can kind of illustrate maybe a little bit better, there's gonna be no, no overlap on either side and then this will fit in there nice and neat. So I'm just making sure that I don't have like, Right here, you can see I got still got just a little bit of overlap there, but I probably can go forward a little bit. So I'm, I'm real close. So it's time to get started on putting in some windows and doors. And like I mentioned previously, I, I really don't have a lot of solid evidence of how this was, was laid out. So I'm just gonna kind of use my imagination. 
I'm gonna put a door in this end of the of the long wall. I say long wall, they're they're all the same length, 20 feet. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put a window in each end. I'm viewing this structure as as probably just a storage shed and maybe a place where a section crew hung out and drank coffee. I don't know. Uh, but what I've got is some of these Northeastern Scale Lumber Company windows and doors. And I'm gonna use this, uh, this barn door looking thing here for the door and then one of the smaller four pane windows. So I've got a lot of practice of doing this on cardboard. That's kind of one of the advantages of doing all the mock-ups. Uh, normally I just draw on the, the cardboard where my windows and doors go, but this time I'm going to actually cut them out and insert the plastic ones. So the only thing tricky about this is whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna do it in reverse. So if I want my door in this end of this particular wall, it's gonna go here. So you kind of have to think in reverse of what's going on here. And I do all my drawing on, you know, the wood, I'm gonna do it on the back side, where on the cardboard, I do it on the front side. So the first thing you do is you just kind of figure out where do you want it to be? I want it to be three foot in, and I'm gonna bring it up off of the bottom one foot. I like to have a nice sharp pencil when I <clears throat> mark things that are, you know, gonna be Nat's ass kind of thing. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to do this without getting my head in the way, but I'll try. Because I have to have optivisors. There's uh, just no way I can do this without using some eyesight uh, enhancement. Just make one little mark that shows you where one foot is. And I only ever make one. Because what I'm gonna do is use the square to draw the line. And I use this block because it extends beyond the material and it just kind of helps keep everything nice and square. And I would like a really small, flat metal square. I've been meaning to look for one of those online. I, I used to have one, but I don't know what happened to it. And this is where if, if, if you've done everything right up to this point, see this is just, your pencil lead doesn't interface with this one like you'd like it to. And it doesn't really matter too much. You can see I'm kind of running downhill a little bit this way, but I'm only putting a door in, so I'm not gonna concern myself too much with that. Now I wanna come in three feet. I'm just eyeballing pretty much. That's the left-hand side of the door. All right, that should give me the door. It's pretty square. Now it's just a matter of cutting it out. And when I cut it out, I'm gonna cut it out on the inside 
of the pencil line. Uh, the last thing you want to do, because this is just going to press in, uh, it doesn't have anything that kind of helps align it. So it's just going to press in and it's thinner than the material. So uh, not by a lot. When you go to cut it out, I always start with the top and the bottom first. And it's a good rule of thumb. And again, my, my head's gonna get in the way here, but it's, it's a good rule of thumb to always put your ruler on top of your work. And I would like that to be a little more square. Uh, but all possible, you wanna put your, your ruler over top of what you're trying to keep. So that's another good rule of thumb. But the reason I start with uh, the top and the bottom is you're going against the grain in this case. And when you go to make your long cuts this way, they're gonna cut real easy because you're going with the grain. So you wanna be careful that you don't split the wood beyond where you're wanting your cut to stop. So that's why you cut here and here first. And it's just all about patience and multiple light passes with a sharp blade. And I'm not gonna lie, this blade is not near sharp enough for what I'm doing. But all of my replacement blades are down in the, the van by the river. So I'm just having to work really safe. Once you kind of get it started, you can remove your ruler. And I just keep flipping it over. You can see I've, I've got the bottom already there, but I haven't broke through anywhere on the top yet. <clears throat> For the window, I'm going to put it dead center and, you know, we decided here that the ground floor inside the building is one foot from the bottom and I just kind of figure most windows, especially, you know, this is a six foot window, so it's probably, you know, two foot to three foot off of the floor. I went with three feet, so this is a scale four feet from the bottom and then this will be the top of the window and these windows have uh, a lip and what I do is I go ahead and get a pair of calipers and then find out on the calipers where I need to mark with the ruler <clears throat> And then that's how I get my lines. And you know, same thing here where I determine this is dead center. I will now go in and figure out the width of where this needs to be. And it Looks like it's gonna be three inches shy of three feet is where I need to cut. So that's where I'll make my marks for my left and right on the window. Okay, so the, the windows and door are installed. And I thought I'd go ahead and, I don't know if you can see it, but I went ahead and took out a little bit of the batten so that the window could sit flush in there. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, I just very carefully scraped away the battens. And I did the same thing here because the trim, which will be a two by eight is what I'm going to be using. So it fits in there nice and flush as well. 
Figured it'd be easier to do now than after I get it glued onto the building, which is the next step. I don't need to do this for this one because it's a solid door, but it will help be a good visual of where it's going to be. The experiment with this, I thought I might try something that wasn't pure black. mess with that one and see what I thought it's like I'm gonna need more than one coat for sure This is uh, Folk Arts Pavement, I think. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite non-black colors. I need to let it dry completely between coats. All right, here we go. Now, yes, if you look close enough, you can tell that there's no depth to the building. And I haven't glazed it yet either, but the, the having the window glaze in there will help a little bit with that because you're going to get a little shine back off of it that will immediately tell you that there's a window there. But here, here's, here's my philosophy on that. There's a lot of people who even with a hollow building will not put interiors and lightings in. They'll put a piece of black cardboard in there. And, you know, I've got a building on the Time Saver that... I put a lot of time and energy into putting a full interior on. I haven't had one visitor come to the railroad and even notice the interior of that building. And on the station house on the Time Saver, which is, this is almost an identical building, uh, I've never had anyone notice that <laughs> there's no hollowness to the building. So, uh, you know, the, this works great as far as I'm concerned. So next step is to glue. All right, you can see I went ahead and rescribed where the actual window is so I can try and keep from getting any glue on it. And this is uh, just regular yellow wood glue. Uh, tight bond two, I believe is what it is. It's the one that's just a little bit uh, water resistant. Not that that really matters. Plenty, but I also don't want so much that it squeezes out everywhere. All right, that should work. should stick just really good right off the get-go. All right, there's the basic structure, all glued up and ready to begin the next step, or just about ready, uh, which <clears throat> is going to be 
you can see right here, if I can get some light on it, that the angle of the roof, you know, this, this edge is, is too high for the roof to interface in there. So I'm gonna need to go in there and trim some of this back at the same angle as the roof. And I've also still got a little bit of uh, <clears throat> height going on here from the roof. And I'm gonna let this dry the rest of the afternoon so that I can sand and cut and do some things on it that I won't have to worry you know, about accidentally pulling something off because if, if the glue's not completely cured yet. Uh, now, the corners, you can see, this is a, a scale probably nine by nine, give or take. It's probably supposed to be a six by six, I don't know. Uh, but it, it works perfectly for this. <clears throat> and you can see what I've done to get it to fit in there really good is one corner of that will get sanded down. <clears throat> you just kind of put it on its edge and sand it down just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then that side will go into the crevice and it fits in there just pretty snug. And then after you get that glued in, of course, you will also trim it at the same level of everything else. Uh, that's later. What I'm going to do now is let that finish drawing. I'm going to do some research on what weathered board and batten looks like and then make a decision if I want to, you know, do I want to make it look like this? Do I want to use the same techniques? Or, you know, would it have been painted if I do decide to paint it? What color would it be? Uh, so there, there's some creative aspects that I need to consider uh, before I go much further. It's warmed up, so I'm going to go outside in the shop and work on the actual layout and, and get back to this uh, maybe this evening. All right, everything's dried up, and I've done some work on one side of the building so that you could really see what I've done versus this side. And, you know, I this is all I had at the moment and it's lousy. So I didn't do it that way. <clears throat> uh, I started just stroking just like this. And then eventually you'll get to where you can kind of run it right flush on the wood. And you just keep stroking it until everything's nice and flush and stay tuned. So everything's sanded and nice and flush and now I'm, I'm not ready to put the trim on by any means, but when you do put the trim on, uh, you will do the same thing. You want to leave it just a little bit high of, of your eave there. And then sand it back. And then, you know, I don't know whether I'll, I'll cut it after I glue it or, or go in and cut it there, uh, probably after I glue it, we'll see. But now you can see everything is gonna fit nice and flush uh, everywhere on the roof.
Now to do some research on what I want this to look like. After some editing last night, I discovered that this video is already about 40 minutes long. And I still have quite a little bit to do concerning the color and the staining of the wood, and I don't wanna rush that. So I'm gonna end this video here and try and make sure that the next one comes out pretty quick. Uh, it will come out before my next turntable video because I still haven't gotten everything I need for the turntable uh, to finish up that video series. So stick around and we'll talk more about the decisions on, on how I'm gonna color and stain the wood up and some more artistic things concerning this building and, and frying pan. Thanks for watching. Oh, pour me a whiskey, oh, barkeep. Oh, pour me four more so I can sleep.